Thank you. The chair now recognizes Mr. Huffman, California. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just responding to some of the recent tropes that uh, get trotted out about environmental groups being driven by greed and avarice and fundraising agendas and things like that. There, there is another plausible explanation that some of these groups perhaps agree with the scientists who tell us that uh, species like the gray wolf are keystone species, that uh, maybe all the peer-reviewed science and other knowledge that we have about the gray wolf suggests that this is an animal that is worth protection and we ought to care about it a lot. And maybe they don't subscribe to some of the 18th century vilification of the wolf that we have heard echoing in some of our uh, debate even here today uh, in the year 2023, uh, including some really confusing vilification that actually suggested uh, that bringing back wolves has resulted in less roadkill in certain areas of deer. Uh, that was a head scratcher. But uh, such is the level of uh, thoughtfulness sometimes when it comes to discussing the wolf, which for centuries has been vilified, and we now know a lot of that vilification was just coming from a place of deep, deep ignorance. So let's entertain at least the possibility that some of these environmental organizations are, are actually in a pretty well-founded, scientifically justified place when it comes to their advocacy to protect a, key, a keystone species uh, like the gray wolf. I also have to note that uh, we have heard some flowery encomiums to states' rights here today. It's been fascinating uh, that we shouldn't do all this listing and we shouldn't pass these amendments to uh, backstop species from extinction because state authority is so important and we should defer to it and respect it. My friend from Arkansas, the chairman, actually brought up the Ninth Amendment, talking about those reserved authorities and powers that we want to see left to the states. Uh, how nice it would be if we uh, took the same approach when it came to uh, educating our kids and girls sports and frankly women's health care and any number of other things. But I just want to sort of put a pin. Will the gentleman in, yield? No, I, I actually. Do you want to talk about girls sports? I'll be happy to talk about Title IX. I'm sure you would and you do quite often. Um, but uh, the, the, the point is uh, when it comes to this, I guess, selective uh, invocation of states' rights and Ninth Amendment and things like that. Uh, let's just remember uh, some of the speeches we just heard, uh, some of the positions that were just taken, because a little later in the agenda, we're going to consider a bill, uh, H.R. 215, which takes a wrecking ball to California law and California authority when it comes to protecting rivers and fisheries and tribal rights. And so I want to believe that my colleagues are sincere in these encomiums to states' rights and state authority and getting the federal government out of the way and not uh, doing heavy-handed federal preemption, encroaching on this wonderful state authority. Um, and I assume that they'll be joining me uh, in opposing that legislation, or at least supporting sensible amendments to make sure that it's not running roughshod over states' rights. So let's keep an eye on that and brace for political whiplash, potentially. And with that, I yield back. Gentlemen, yields back, and I was referencing the, the Tenth Amendment, not tenth the Ninth Amendment. Tenth, what, yeah, the Tenth, sorry. You, you're the one that went Reserved to law to the school. states. Yeah, I ought to know better, huh? All right. Thanks for that correction. <laughs>